there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission, one message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. Welcome to the program. I'm Rick Wiles. Today is Thursday, August 16, 2012. Pastor Chris Huff will be here in just a few minutes. There's a burden on my heart to talk to you about the perfect storm I see forming on the horizon. It is the eeriest thing I've seen in my lifetime, geopolitical, financial, and natural patterns are congelling in the spiritual atmosphere above us into a mega storm. This old world has never experienced anything close to what is about to roll over this world. The storm clouds are no longer in the distant horizon. They are close, moving fast, growing darker, and more ominous by the day. My advice to all devout Christians is to strap yourself into the seat and brace for impact, and pray that God will get us through it. This isn't going to be pretty. The most important thing is to know that you and your family members are under the sacred blood of Jesus Christ. If our physical body perishes in the days ahead as the storm rips across nations, what is important is that our spirit survives and dwells with our Heavenly Father. Therefore, confess your sins. And make things right with both God and men and women. Anybody who daily tracks the world headlines notices that things are moving in the wrong direction at an alarming velocity in recent months. Israel is beating the war drums loudly. The government is planning to activate this month a cell phone texting system to warn citizens that the country is under attack. Tel Aviv has tagged underground parking garages as bomb shelters for up to 800,000 people. Israelis are scrambling to buy gas masks. Schools are conducting bomb shelter drills. Foreign governments have contingency plans to evacuate their citizens from Israel. Russia has sent warships and Russian Marines to Syria to stand by to evacuate their citizens from that country. Persian Gulf nations today, such as Saudi Arabia, warned their residents to flee Lebanon immediately. Israel's civil defense chief expects a month-long war. Israeli newspapers daily report inside information that Mr. Netanyahu is ready to launch an attack on Iran between October 2nd and November 6th. He's going to meet Barack Obama in New York City on September 28th, which many people believe will be when they sign off on the date to commence hostilities. Meanwhile, Russian strategic nuclear bombers are making incursions on America's west coast near missile defense shield installations such as Vandenberg Air Force Base. A Russian attack sub prowled the Gulf of Mexico for a month and nobody noticed. And according to Moscow's Pravda news outlet, Mr. Putin deployed on May 11 nuclear armed missiles in Cuba. Yet the American people know nothing about it. The dark clouds of war are moving in precisely as the dark clouds of economic collapse are intensifying. Last May, Nigel Farage said that the Bilderberg boys cannot implement their radical steps to save their EU scheme without imposing a total dictatorship and suspending elections across the European continent. In the USA, we learned recently that the Federal Reserve ordered America's five biggest banks to develop contingency plans to survive a financial meltdown. It appears to me that the Fed doesn't care about the rest of the banks. They will save only the five biggest banks. And when the storm is over, all the small and regional banks will be gone. The only ones remaining will be the banks that own the Federal Reserve. What a coincidence. The U.S. federal government is positioning itself for financial Armageddon. First, the U.S. military was authorized to arrest and indefinitely detain American citizens accused of supporting terrorism. Well, who defines supporting terrorism? 
Second, Mr. Obama has signed a plethora of executive orders giving him self giving himself dictatorial powers in a national emergency. Third, U.S. soldiers are driving armored military vehicles inside American cities, supposedly as driver education for young soldiers. And the most worrisome sign of all is the frightening amassing of of deadly hollow point ammunition by the Department of Homeland Security and other federal agencies, including the Social Security Administration and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. At last count, the purchases that we know about exceed 1.2 billion bullets for domestic government agencies. Yesterday, a very trusted and reliable source was told by Homeland Security, uh, by a Homeland Security agent, that over 20,000 Russian Spesnaz commandos have infiltrated into the USA this summer over the Canadian border. That information was passed to me yesterday, and if I did not know the person who called me with the information, I, I, I don't know if I would, if I would believe it, but I know the source, and the source assured me that it came from a Homeland Security person that they know privately. Let's not forget that the U.S. government in officially invited a group of Spesnaz commandos to Colorado last June for special training. For instance, this isn't good. No matter which scenario you come up with to explain it away, it's not good. Here's the best case scenario. The U.S. government is fully aware that a world war is coming, that Spesnaz commandos are arriving in large numbers, and that there will be a full-scale ground invasion. Therefore, they're rushing to stockpile 1.2 billion rounds of ammo in federal buildings around the nation because everybody will be required to defend the country from a land invasion. That's the best case scenario. Want to hear my worst case scenario? Well, here it is. Our government has been compromised at the highest levels by traitors. Spesnaz commandos are being allowed to enter the nation in large numbers for the takeover. The mysterious, unexplained, massive purchases of hollow point bullets is to provide Spetsnaz snipers with plenty of ammo to kill off American resistors. Listen, nobody has spoken more forcibly since 2007 that Barack Hussein Obama is a foreign plant, a Marxist communist revolutionary. Nobody has spoken more forcibly than me. His entire past association is a long procession of communists from childhood days to his illegitimate presidency days. And Homeland Security is buying over a billion hollow point bullets to slaughter the American people. And who really controls Janet Napolitano? None other than Valerie Jarrett, a deeply committed Chicago communist whose father-in-law was a close associate of Frank Marshall Davis, little Barry Satoro's Marxist mentor, and perhaps his real father. Well... I've uh, probably said more than enough to get taken off the air or murdered. I'll take a break. I'm Rick Wiles. This is True News, the voice of the Christian resistance to Obama's communist revolution. You're listening to True News, the end-time newscast.